just wait for two minutes more because it is going to get recorded. Is my voice clear? Is my voice clear, boys and girls? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, boys and girls. We are going to see the contents now. Already it is started, recorded, it's been recording is being started now. So there are 40, 29 members. So I'm going to change the layout so that I can see all of you. Okay. <clears throat> so friends, in last session, we guys have seen different concepts of environment and uh, in today's session also, in this particular session, we are going to talk about wherever we guys have stopped from that point onwards, we are going to say. Just wait. I'm going to share my screen with your permission. And now I will ask you whether my screen is visible or not. Is it visible? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. So I'm going to show you the PPT wherever we have stopped from that particular point onwards, we are going to see the contents. So, so this one is a, I think here we have gone through all these contents. I think let me revise whatever we have seen in last session. Yesterday we have seen the definition of environment. Even after that, we have seen the scope of environmental studies, why those, uh, these environmental studies are conducted. There are different reasons of conducting uh, this kind of studies. Then we have talked about stratosphere. Then we have uh, talked about thermosphere, then exosphere. Then I have shown you these images for better understanding. And I hope you guys have understood whatever I taught you. Then we talked about hydrosphere. Then we talked about lithosphere, which is called as land. Biosphere also we guys have talked about. Then activities of biosphere also we guys have seen. Then we guys have gone through this particular image and uh, I explained this image for you all. Still I remember. Then we have explained this one also. Then we have gone for this one also. We have talked about man and environment, how man and environment are correlated. What sort of relationship is there between man and environment that also we have seen in past lectures. And uh, we were talking about impact of technology on environment and we have been talked about this one. There is no issue. We have talked about positive effect of this one. Then we have talked about this one also, if I'm not wrong. Then we have gone for negative effects also. And uh, <clears throat> here we guys have stopped. I still remember. So from this particular point onwards, we are going to start our today's session. So friends, I request you all to pay your, ten, pay your 100 percent attention. And from this, we are going to see the next point. So friends, uh, this one is a point of discussion today. And uh, the point of discussion is environmental. Just a minute, friends. Hello? Can you see my screen now? 
Yes, sir. We can see. Okay, just a minute. Okay, so you can see my presentation. Okay. Sorry, today there are so many, you know, disturbances. So we were discussing about this environmental degradation, how the environment is degrading day by day, and who are responsible for those kind of degradation. As we know that environment is the most and important aspect, and people are not take, taking care of environment, and because of that, whatever issues we are seeing, we are going through, we are suffering, we are experiencing. Because of those, we guys have suffered a lot. So, who is responsible for this kind of environmental degradation? That is the point of discussion, and we are going to discuss about this. So, what is the concept of environmental degradation that we can see by looking at the picture also? If you look at that small picture, uh, which is having a cartoon, so that we can see how we are troubling the earth and how we are troubling environment. And when we trouble environment, definitely environment will trouble us one day. So this one is a fact, and this one is a, another side of environmental degradation. So we are discussing about that one, and here we are going to see the definition of environmental degradation. I'm going to read the definition at the at the same time I will explain you the definition which is given for environmental degradation. So friends, the overall lowering of environmental qualities due to the damages caused by both natural events and human activities in the basic structure of the environment at local, regional and global levels adversely affecting all living organisms including man. So see, uh, as I told you, who is responsible or who are responsible for environmental degradation, that is very important. So there are two types of uh, events which are uh, responsible for environmental degradation. One is natural events. As we know that sometimes we get flood, we go for, you know, a number of natural calamities. So natural calamities are the first one. And apart from natural calamities, forget about natural calamities, natural calamities are rarely they come. And uh, we face the problem of natural calamities once in a you know, decade or like that. But human activities are the most dangerous and human activities are the second responsible things for environmental degradation. So as far as this environmental degradation is concerned, human activities are more responsible and more dangerous because we are cutting trees, we are cutting forests, we are constructing homes by cutting trees. So those things are also responsible for environmental degradation. So what we are going to see, we are going to see the concept of environmental degradation at uh, regional level, local level and global level as such, and how it is going to affect, uh, whether it is going to affect adversely or anything else, that is also important. So here, from this particular definition, what we can see, we can understand, we can understand one thing. For the environmental degradation, there are two people, there are two events which are responsible and those two events are natural events as well as human activities and both are responsible for natural environmental degradation. So we are going to see how it is degraded and uh, how it is or what sort of impact it has been created in a brief and precise manner in a days to come or in upcoming lectures. So now we're going to see the second point. Environmental degradation arises due to, because of a number of reasons as I told you, it uh, arises because of reasons and the reasons we have given here. Consumption of natural resources by overpopulation of developing country, countries. So see uh, why this environmental degradation is happening and who are responsible, as I told you, there are two things which are required or which are responsible. One is natural calamities and second one, man-made calamities. So most of the developing countries like India, those who are uh, in the process of developing, those who are developing their you know, nation, developed nations are not that much responsible, but those who are in the category of uh, developing countries, they are more responsible because they are using natural resources very excessively or massively or aggressively they are using uh, natural resources for the their population so this is what uh, you know uh, environmental degradation is taking place the second one is what wasteful overconsumption of resources by developed countries 
developed countries are not behind in this they are also trying to cause the natural uh, environmental degradation they are also uh, consuming more resources for their you uh, know day to day uh, requirement purpose and that is also important that is also useful uh, that is also the cause of environmental degradation as such so these are the two important uh, uh, reasons and these are the two important uh, events which are responsible for environmental degradation moving on to the next one and here we are going to talk about uh, environmental sciences i think we guys have gone through this in this one so many sciences which we guys have covered so here we can say environmental science is not only you know the science of environment it includes everything it is interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary approach so most of the things we have covered here i have read the names only because it is very difficult to explain each and every one if i try to go for each and every one it will take one week to explain so ecology is there biology is there chemistry is there atmospheric science is there oceanology oceanography is there geology is there archaeology is there anthropology is there sociology history political science engineering economics and ethics so all those things are covered and this is what we call it multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary approach which is there in the environmental science and now moving on to the next one and there we are going to talk about a multidisciplinary nature of environmental science why it is called as multidisciplinary nature because uh, here not only one subject is included one issue is covered one area is covered all the necessary areas one more than one subject is covered here and this is what it is called as multidisciplinary nature of the environmental studies we are uh, is my voice clear can you hear me properly yes sir okay so when we talk about the multidisciplinary approach of environmental sciences we need to understand something and uh, that i'm going to tell you if you look at the first statement that i have written here environmental studies is the scientific study of our environment and our place in it whenever we talk about environmental studies it uh, uh, definitely it is the scientific study uh, in which environment that we live wherever we live wherever or whatever sort of environment we live so that is a sort of that particular study and which is called about scientific study then definition environmental studies is the study of environmental issues so here in this kind of uh, you know environmental studies what we do exactly we go for environmental awareness why this environmental awareness is there for your syllabus we are trying to study the environmental issues whatever environmental issues are there nowadays we try to learn them we try to understand them and this is what it is called about environmental studies then it has broader coverage than environmental science and includes social aspects of environmental also environment also so when it comes to environmental science definitely environmental science is a broad concept it's not a small concept it includes everything it includes scientific approach as well as social approach of environment and last it deals with science where necessary and also include the study of physical and biological environment and also cultural and social factors and their impact on environment so here when we talk about science definitely in science we go for certain type of systematic approach so here we go for physical biological cultural and social as i told you it is not a science it is a part of you know social approach also so we have two approaches when we go for scientific or, or environmental studies whenever whenever we want to go for environmental studies we need to have two approaches with us one is a scientific approach where we are going to talk about physical and biological environment and we should have you know sociological approach also so where we can see cultural aspects where we can see social aspects also so this is what this environment studies is called as this multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary so not only science is that but at the same time we need to talk about social approach cultural approach in environmental studies as we know that uh, when we uh, you know try to understand the environment there are some cultural issues there are some sociological issues that are also attached with the environment as we know that some of uh, i think in certain part of our country there are some people they uh, worship uh, trees 
ट्रीटमेंट फॉर असे काय राज्य आहेत की ते राज्य झाडांची पूजा करतात झाडांना लहान मुलांसारखं सांभाळतात त्या काळातले लोक सो वी हॅव वन कल्चरल बेस ऑल्सो वी हॅव वन सोशल बेस ऑल्सो अँड दिस इज वॉट इट इज कॉल्ड ऍज मल्टी डिसिप्लिनरी अप्रोच अँड दॅट इज व्हेरी मच इम्पॉर्टंट देन वी आर गोईंग टू सी द स्कोप ऑफ एन्व्हायरमेंटल स्टडीज हाऊ इट इज वॉट शॉर्ट ऑफ स्कोप इज देअर for environmental studies as such so if you want to understand the scope of environmental studies then we can understand how it is important and why it is important so as far as the scope of environmental studies are concerned as i told you there are so many environmental related studies are conducted by so many people for different purposes at the time of conducting the uh, environmental study uh, approaches were different and now when we go through their studies we can understand what sort of approaches they had at the time of conducting or at the time of undertake undertaking those studies so this is what it is very much important for their studies so just look at the points those i have written here the first one is what natural resources most of the studies which are conducted on environment those are uh, those are related to these aspects which i have mentioned here just go through this the first thing about natural resources their conservation and management see the natural resources are the most important aspect on planet earth we all are using natural resources and as i told you yesterday only one day natural resources won't be there and one day we will have to you know uh, go for another option we will have to find out one another, one more option for natural resources and accordingly we people have started finding other options for natural resources what comes under the category of natural resources that also we are going to see in a separate topic but in a brief manner i will tell you what are the natural resources so natural resources are what there is you know water oil then metals that we get those are all those are the natural resources and what happened we are trying to conserve them and we are trying to manage the use of natural resources what happened as i told you these developing countries and developed countries are consuming excessively natural resources they are consuming natural resources very much excessively so what happened so if they stop or if they go for minimum usage of natural resources definitely these resources will be long lasting otherwise what i told you the upcoming generation will definitely blame us for using natural resources excessively so we need to uh, save them we need to protect them we need to preserve them for our next generation and this is what uh, most of the studies are conducted on natural resources and their conservation and management so from those studies it has been you know uh, really revealed that natural resources are the most important aspect and we need to conserve them we need to manage them we need to preserve them for future generation and this is what these kind of studies are conducted then we are going to talk about the second one that is ecology and biodiversity as we know that ecology and biodiversity are the most an important aspect because ecology is nothing but what whatever we see around us it is a part of ecology so when we talk about environment environment in environment ecology is the most important aspect and biodiversity is also important so see uh, i will talk about biodiversity later before that uh, i will talk about ecology ecology means what whatever you can see in the nature that is ecology what you can see in the nature you can see trees you can see animals you can see human beings you can see insect you can see you know rocks you can see uh, land you can see soil you can see n number of things which are there in the nature so that is called as ecology when it comes to biodiversity as we know that uh, india is a diverse country whatever uh, biodiversity you see in maharashtra is not there in another state of uh, india if you go to karnataka if you go to tamil nadu if you go to jammu and kashmir they have their different you know status they have their different uh, uh, forget about culture forget about culture but you can see you know uh, as far as nature is concerned they are totally different if you go to rajasthan you can see something different so this kind of uh, variety as far as nature is concerned is called as what biodiversity even the animals that you see in maharashtra you cannot see those animals 
in you know in and k even in tamil nadu and so on even the you know crops we grow in maharashtra are not uh, equal or not same in other states so this is what it is very much important for uh, to understand the biodiversity just a minute let me attend one call ha okay so this way we can understand the concept of biodiversity then environmental population and control uh, sorry extremely sorry environmental pollution and control as we know that uh, we guys are suffering from environment there are different types of environment and uh, this is what it is very much important so what we guys have to understand there are different types of pollutions and how those pollutions can be controlled as we know that uh, there are different types of pollutions such as uh, you know air pollution water pollution land pollution soil pollution then uh, noise pollution so n number of pollutions are there but we are not going to understand the pollutions only we know the pollutions we are suffering from the pollutions that we know everyone but we are going to understand how the pollution can be controlled what are the ways of controlling the pollution that is also important because you know uh, we are creating pollution but we are not trying to control it if we control it then it will be good otherwise if we just contributing into the pollution then it is very much dangerous it is very much you know hazardous for the we all then social issues in relation to development and environment uh, now here uh, most of the studies are conducted on social issues of the environment in relation to development and environment basically uh, you know most of the researchers they did uh, sort of studies which are related to environment and they covered n number of topics which are related to development and in, uh, development and environment of social issues in the last human population and environment so see uh, there may be one question in the mind of you guys why it is happening why we are troubling to the environment and when we trouble to the environment definitely one day environment will uh, environment will trouble us so what i'm going to tell you who are the main responsible persons for or what is the main responsible thing for environment that we can understand so as far as this uh, human uh, environment problem their concern or uh, preservation and the conservation of environment is concerned the main and dangerous aspect is what human population as we know that human population is increasing day by day on this planet earth and this population is troubling the environment as we know that uh, you know we are not having space to construct the houses this is what we are uh, deforesting the lands whatever forest we can see we are trying to deforest it there are so many reasons and why it is happening because of the huge amount of population population is increasing day by day we cannot control the population this is the issue and uh, i think india is the second top most country in the world who is having more population china is the first one and very soon we will cross china and we'll, we will be the top most so this is what human population and the population explosion we see means uh, lok sankita we support his further matters karan nahi and that is the main reason of environmental problems that we are facing if we control the population if we control the pollution automatically environmental problems won't be there pollution is there because of the population so the main culprit of environmental uh, problems is none other than population that we can understand here so this is for scope of environmental study that we can see now we are going to talk about something different and here we are going to talk about objectives of environmental education as i told you uh, you guys are taking environmental education through this subject which is called as what environmental awareness so why what are the objectives behind giving this kind of education to you all or to all the students as i told you ugc has managed ugc has made it compulsory made it mandatory for all ug courses for all ug courses to learn this subject at second year and in every second year this subject is compulsory so what are the objectives of giving environmental education to you all so that i have sorted here and awareness of the environment and its problem so we are trying to make you aware about environment we you all are aware about the environment but we are not taking care of environment 
so through this particular subject or through this particular lectures which we are conducting which we are taking we are trying to make you aware about the environment and environmental problems so this is what it is most important one just minute huh? hello hmm. Hmm. Okay, so we are trying to make you aware about environmental problems, environmental issues, and this is what environmental education is given. Second one, basic knowledge and understanding of the environment and its interrelationship with man. Basically, we are trying to provide you basic knowledge of environment as well as we are trying to provide proper understanding of environment and how it is related with the man. As I told you, we cannot separate environment and man because we all are living on the planet Earth. And, uh, you know, uh, there is a relation between we people as well as uh, environment. So we are trying to understand what sort of relationship is there between the man and environment already we have seen in previous slides. Moving to the next, moving on to the next one and that we are going to see social values and attitudes which are in harmony with environmental quality so see uh, when we talk about environmental qualities and environmental uh, harmonies there are social values also attitudes that also we are going to understand through this kind of environmental education then skills to solve environmental problems through this particular education or through this particular lectures you are trying to solve some skills which are required to solve environmental problem and this one is the most and important aspect this one is the most and important part of this environmental education and the last two things are left and those also i'm going to explain sense of responsibility and urgency towards environment as so as to ensure appropriate actions to solve environmental problems Basically, if we want to solve environmental problems, we will want to take certain actions or certain appropriate actions for the purpose of environmental issues, then we need to have that sort of responsibility and that sort of sense and that sort of urgency towards the environment. Basically, what happens, you know, those who are trying to solve this kind of problems, they don't have that sense of responsibility and sense of urgency. And if we understand the sense of responsibility and sense of urgency towards environment, we can definitely solve those things. So this is what we should have that sort of sense of responsibility and sense of urgency uh, while taking the education. Then consider environment is in its totality. So see, whatever environment we see and the basic objective behind providing environmental education is what we are or they are asking you to consider environmental environmental issues in total man or in totality man so this is what uh, environmental education is given and whatever objectives we guys have seen those are the objectives of providing of uh, behind providing environmental education i think so so these are the objectives which we guys have seen now we are going to talk about some of the activities handled by environmental engineers uh, most of the things that i'm going to cover here and after that, we will wind up for the introductory part. And in second lecture of today's session, we can see something different or second topic. So here, there are certain activities which are handled by the environmental engineer. So what sort of activities they have handled? Uh, activities like waste management they have handled. As I think waste management is the big issue. I'm going to talk about that one also in a precise manner. Then toxic material manage control they have did their level best water supply also is managed by the environmental engineer storm water management that is also managed soiled uh, solid water solid waste disposal then land management public health and safety radiation protection industrial hygiene air quality all those things are managed by the environmental engineer as far as their activities are concerned moving on to the next one here you can see and environment influences our life how it has been influenced that we can see by looking at this picture basically this one is the picture which talks a lot and from this picture we can understand how the environment and man is correlated 
and uh, the last but not least i'm going to say you this one thank you very much for this particular session hello hmm the audio is joining report mark astapana mark okay okay so this is the uh, content of my session today i hope you guys have understood so thank you very much we are going to meet in second lecture today that is at uh, 12:40 sharp so be there and uh, in that session we are going to start your second topic so i deal with topic number 1 topic number 1 zhalela hai purcha lecture me pan topic number 1 dusra shuru karuyat and git apan navin vishesh shikwa तर थांबायचं थँक्यू सर थँक्यू सर वेलकम वेलकम